Well hello and welcome to Mr Sam's Trains once again and here's another short instruction, well our first short instruction video on how to lubricate your locomotives, uh, not only the wheels and such but the, the engine as well. So a few things you'll need is um, uh, some, some method of holding the locomotive. Now you can buy um, a special bed to put the locomotives in. I can't remember who you can buy it from, but you can. But this is just random piece of packaging that one of my locomotives came in, um, which I find to be very good. You also need some light machine oil, which this has been put into a green food colouring bottle, which is totally random, and that obviously isn't necessary, but you can if you want. I just find that it's a little bit more manageable. Um, what I did was I just searched into Amazon uh, sewing machine oil, and uh, this comes up. And I totally recommend that. I've been running all my locomotives with it and uh, for about six months to a year actually and they, they're absolutely perfect. Uh, and that's what this is in this bottle. Now what you don't want to use is WD-40, uh, this stuff, because that cleans and prevents rust and does all sorts of other stuff which is nice but it's just uh, we don't really want that. So it can mess things up a little bit. Also what you need is some form of dropper. Uh, this is just a paper clip that I've bent outwards. Um, you can use all sorts of syringes and needles and droppers and all sorts, but um, you know it's not necessary. So a needle, um, paper clip, anything like that would be absolutely fine. Uh, now this is optional. You might want some uh, cotton buds, any old cotton buds. Uh, you don't necessarily need those, but you can if you like. And the last part is optional. Um, not, haha, <laughs> is the locomotive. Now this is an old Hornby Triang one. And I've chosen this one because it's quite nice to get into the motor and all that jazz. And uh, so to start with, we're just going to look at the wheels first and uh, lubricating all that. Now this has only just been recently lubricated, which is a bad idea. So I'm not actually going to do it, but I'm going to show you exactly how you would go about doing it. So just taking the lid off this, obviously, and using the paper clip, we just dip this in till there's a globule on the end of it. Looks a bit like that. You can see it a little bit there, can't you? Just a little bit. And um, so you basically, you want to lubricate any part that is moving. So for example, all these, there you go, I actually did lubricate that one for you, there you go. This one as well in the center, um, all the linkage obviously. You need to do that on both sides, front piece of linkage. I'm actually, I might as well just do it. And then the valve gear and all that stuff. So yes, there we go. And uh, you need to do that on the other side as well, which isn't, uh, which is obvious. I'll just do really quick. Now it's important that no matter what oil you use, you don't want to get it on the surface of the wheels because it can act as a conductor. Uh, and even if it doesn't, you will lose traction and it'll be quite dodgy. So you don't want to do that. But what you do want to do is keep all this lubed, uh, just so it moves nice and, and smoothly. Now, uh, any additional uh, wheels and that, such as the bogey or the, uh, the little back wheels here, you can also put a blob on. You don't need too much, and that's a big point you need to make. You do not want to use too much because it will clog things up and it will get everywhere and you can damage the engine. And uh, yes, this should be done every, well, Hornby recommend that you do it every six months, but it's, you know, any sign of any bad running, if it's not smooth, if anything goes wrong, you know, uh, you need to do it then. Well, that's that for the wheels. Now you also want to make sure you put plenty of it on this cog here, which we can see out here. And um, yes, that's that's mainly it for the outside. Now for the inside, the reason I have chosen this, uh, this Hornby Triang engine is because um, all the engine gear and everything is all exposed. Uh, so you can get to it, so you're able to, uh, you know, maintain it. Now I've lost my screwdriver, which is quite an essential tool, unfortunately, as to getting inside. So I'll just cut it here until I find it, uh, and then I'll carry on. Apologies. Okay, I've, I've found my screwdriver. Here it is. Uh, I should have probably put that on the list of things to do. Now the next thing you need to do, and this section is very much optional, you only need to do this if the locomotive isn't running very well, if, if it's running noisily, and uh, basically if all the other previous methods that I've just shown you of lubrication don't work. Um, now there is something I've missed out, and I miss that out on purpose because I like to do that last. Um, but basically the next thing you need to do is work out how to get into the locomotive. So there's normally a screw at the back, but in this case there's a screw on the top. 
in the funnel, which I think is quite interesting. Basically, you just got to get that out and get the body off. If you can, there we go. It's a pain to get that back on, but we'll be showing you how to do that. But yes, this is the reason why I chose the old Hornby Trying Locos, because you have easy access to them at the motor and all that. And this is the point where I'm going to zoom in, because you need to look. Now I'm going to do another video of all the, uh, the parts of inside a locomotive, just because it does help if anything goes wrong to know what you're doing inside there. But in very basic terms, here's the motor coils here, here's the brushes, there's the commutator, which the brushes are touching. And then obviously you've got the worm there, which attaches to the worm wheel on the back, uh, which obviously ultimately drives the locomotive. Now I've got a magnet here, which will get stuck on your uh, screwdriver, so just be wary of that, especially if you're using a paper clip. Uh, if you want to try and find a non-magnetic um, implement, then I would recommend doing that, but it's not a huge problem to me. So you don't really need to oil the worm uh, if you've already oiled the worm wheel. Uh, because if you just run it for a bit, it should, you know, it should uh, spread the oil onto there. But what we've basically got to do is we've got to oil the joints of the motor so that it runs nicely. Now, once again, I've already done that to this locomotive, so it isn't necessary to do it again for me. But I'll show you exactly what we need to do. So basically, all the bearings of the motor we need to oil. So just taking this again, just dipping in again. You basically want to find where any part where the motor is attached to the body, so I'll actually do it this way, sorry to the chassis. So there's a part here where you want to blob there, and you can just turn it in. Try not to touch the actual coils, but you can touch all the other stuff. And actually the, the next thing you have to do is a bit of a pain, because the second bearing is close to this brush. Now if you want to work around the brush you can, but what I like to do is take the brush off. So you just basically unflip this here so that it comes loose and then you, the brush should just come straight out. Now if you do want to use tweezers you can. Uh, tweezers are better when you're trying to get the bloody thing back in. But uh, normally you can just shake it and it will fall out. Now this, doing this will loosen uh, other parts of the loco which you don't necessarily want. Now this is the point where if you have a dirty commutator, as I do, which I, I'm, I'm a bit shocked about because I thought it was clean. This is where your cotton buds may come in. Now, if you also want to, you can use a little bit of nail polish remover, um, like this one. I think it's from Morrison's or something. But what I've done is I've, again, similar to with the lubricant, I've just siphoned a bit off into a food coloring bottle so it can get to it. This is optional, um, but it could be a reason why your loco is not running great. So you just dip a bit of that in and then very carefully just scrub all that rubbish off the commutator. Um, now a filthy commutator, if it gets filthy too quickly, can be a sign of brushes decaying and you can get brushes off eBay. Um, off the top of my head it's around 4 something, so 450 say, you can get a pair of brushes in nice brand new condition and you just stick them on and it works perfectly. But as you can see I'm just cleaning the commutator here. The commutator is basically what takes power ultimately from the track and converts it into kinetic energy and uh, you're never going to get it perfectly clean because it is you know it is a dirty thing as it is but you just want to basically get most of that off right so that was a bit of a sidetrack apologies for that uh, but then what you want to do is take another glob of oil from here and oil this bearing here there we go and you can also get the other side of that bearing as well which is here near the worm so I will do that as well if I were you. And then you can just work that in uh, by turning the motor around. But um, you will need to run the locomotive. What I recommend is just run it backwards and forwards for 10 minutes or so, once you've done this, and that just works all the oil in nicely. Now for the absolutely fun part, and I suppose I should show this because I've shown you how to take the brush off, but I haven't shown you how to take it back on. Now you can um, clean the brush as well, if you want that's ultimately the reason why the commutator is dirty so like I say just clean the brush if you want to there we go now you can use tweezers but I think it takes longer with tweezers so what I do is I just take it like this um, come on focus never mind you can you get the idea take it in your fingers and then shove it in it's a nightmare but uh, the brush isn't particularly delicate 
really. I mean, you don't want to bend it. But, you know, if you don't use too much force, it shouldn't come to any harm. So there you go, it's in. You just take this piece of wire and make sure it's sat nicely. It isn't sat straight and it isn't sat nicely. When you run the engine, it'll just come straight off again. So we'll, uh, oops. Thank you, camera, for being so kind with your zoom. That's about as far as we're going to go without having to manually focus. Um, yes, and that should do it. So if you want to uh, oil your worm as well, you can. Now uh, it's important that you don't dislodge um, any of this uh, insulation here because actually all of this section of all of this section, sorry, of the, uh, the motor is live, and um, that's why you've got this insulator here as well. Um, so this insulation, you don't want to remove it. Uh, it does look a bit silly, but it, it will cause a short if you remove it, so you don't really want to do that. And there's a bit of a hair here, fun of the carpet railway there, thank you for that. And now, there's the final part, so I'm going to put this locomotive body back on. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, so... I think the body's back on, um, which is a relief, and I'll hate opening up this loco, which incidentally is a Princess Victoria, if you haven't noticed already. Now the final part is to actually oil the axles of the wheels. Now because this is a bit of a messy task, I tend to leave this until last, but you don't have to, that's just a choice. Uh, now some locos are better than others at doing this, but you've basically got to get some lubricant down to the wheel axles. Now with some modern locos you can actually get straight down to the axles and just put it right on but with these that's a little more hassle than it's worth so you just want to part it as much as you can and then just drop a bit of oil down here onto the axle if any of it comes into contact with the surface of the wheel or the contacts which are here uh, you, d you don't oops which are there sorry uh, you want to remove that with a cotton bud which is why I've got the cotton buds uh, again you only want a little bit so if there is any excess you need to remove that with a cotton bud if you can I'll just do that to all of them there we go again you've got to be careful of all the linkage and the valve gear because um, it is delicate, and it's not as delicate as on modern locomotives, but it's still pretty delicate. Now that's ready to run, basically. Um, that's all you need to lubricate. Again, you can lubricate more if you like, um, but I would say only do it every six months. Um, or I think it's every 48 hours running time. It might be 24 hours, I don't know, something like that. But uh, as I say, do it as and when you want. If it starts performing badly, um, do it then. And obviously, the wheel axle oiling, that works with rolling stock as well. But if they do have plastic wheels, you want to be careful because the plastic wheels do decompose slightly. Um, if you put the wrong type of oil on, which is again, which is what WD-40 does. So these are plastic wheels here. So be cautious with those. Um, but yes, let's get her running and see how she looks. Thanks for watching, goodbye.